the Gaia GPS mobile app on an iPad. Here we go. All right, we're going to get started here. Uh, we have a webcam on top of the monitor that I'm looking at. We have a microphone off to my right here, so uh, you can hear me loud and clear. And then down on the table here, I have this iPad that um, is being shared on the screen. I'll be using the iPad to do the touch uh, selections and manipulation for the screen. This cursor right here is on my computer. I will probably sometimes get confused when I'm clicking on stuff versus touching, but I want to be able to use the cursor to point to things so you know what I'm doing. To get started, I am using Gaia GPS. It's a app that you can download, whether you have iOS or Android. Uh, it's something that you can download for free. So I'm going to select that with uh, the touch screen on the iPad. And that's loaded. The symbol on there on this, the symbol here shows my present location. All right, this part of the screen right here, uh, it just toggles between the full map mode and putting a menu up. So you have menu controls down here to, to do some certain things. We'll look at that. This here is a toggle between three states, this location. Will just be anywhere but down here it just moves but if you toggle it here it will center it and and then if i move it it goes back to green did you see that there so i want to get that back centered so anytime you go to the red mode it'll center your location to the map very nice when it comes to being on the trail you know you got a lot of things going on and you want to make sure that you always have a visual on where you're at but as soon as you start looking at it, maybe you start zooming out or zooming in or moving it, let's say, so let's say you move yourself off the center, that will, that red turns to green. The other mode is if you hit it again, when it's red, it makes the direction always north, a north heading. So you can't really um, change that part there. So, okay. So it's just a toggle between three states. That's that. I usually either have it in green or red. This is just um, another uh, menu of selections of ways to do things, whether you want to record a track, you want to add a waypoint, and so on and so forth. Here, this uh, part here is your layers, uh, your map layers. So if you want to have additional layers, added or you want to make them active right now these are all inactive i right now have only gaia streets active if i wanted let's say the fishing and river maps or net you know let's say i wanted that i would just go down i would touch that just i'm just touching it and it goes up to the top if i want it i don't want it anymore i just click the x i just touch the x and then i just touch the layer part here again to turn that to get that off the screen if you do find yourself oriented other than north you can always hit this compass and it will write the map again and the compass will disappear okay so these this area in the map it just allows you to keep track of various traveling activities that you're doing as you're on the trail perhaps uh you know you're recording your route so as you record your route it'll track distance and total time and elevation and so on okay and the, and the way to track or record is a, a track is to click on this record is to touch that with your finger to touch that and it'll start recording i'm gonna start doing that right now 
and now it says it's recording and you know the total time is going and as i move around uh, it'll start adding up the distances and so on and so forth and when you're done you just click that same thing again and then you have a choice of you can pause it finish or delete the track and let's just say that um i just want to delete the track uh, let's say i want to finish a track it'll then allow you to name the track you can type in whatever you'd like here, categorize it, and so on and so forth. I'm going to click on cancel. I'm going to touch the cancel here. All right. If you want to change one of these data gathering pieces here, you just like elevation, for example, all I'm going to do is touch elevation. And there's many different things that you can make that B, you know, instead of elevation. So if you wanted um, ascent instead, then you just leave it there. And now I'm touching outside of here. I'm going to touch, well, I think I got to touch up here. So I'm going to touch right here. And now it's ascent. Now, also, as I rotate the screen, you're going to see this here um, change. And I'm rotating the screen. And now we have less data type points for it to track. So I usually use, I always, I'm not usually, I use this in landscape. So it gives me the most number of, you know, things that I can look at as I'm in, on my, on my trip. So something that's handy <clears throat> that I found that works better is in landscape. Plus I like that landscape look. Uh, it gives me, it, it just works better for me. It doesn't have to be that way, though. You can use it the other way. Okay, so next we're going to take a look at this option here. And as I select that, oh, and by the way, the reason why the screen orient the screen has changed sizes is uh, at when I did this, the menu was cutting off down below, so you might be able to see that. So I just needed to change that so i'm going to i'm going to touch that on the ipad there and uh it laid this thing over top and you see your menus down here i'm just going to first uh touch the trip option it just gives some gps location information my elevation the course it thinks i'm walking or doing whatever with with this ipad the sunrise and sunset times and the current speed. Then if I were actually recording a trip, it would give more data and a nice graph of elevation changes, that sort of thing. Um, maybe not on the mobile app. Maybe that's only on the web. I don't recall. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection down here for search. And this, <clears throat> there's various types of trips and things that are in the Gaia database. And you can search on those up here in this blank field here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to touch saved. And here is uh, my various folder selections and uh, my folder structure that should resemble my Gaia GPS for the web. Now, sometimes you make changes in one system or another, whether it's in the mobile app or the web. It takes some time for these things to sync up with each other. So you might come in here and organize some things and then go on your trip uh, right away, you know, I, and it just might not be quite the same. So you got to give it some time to sync up. So just a, just a note there to be aware of. And then the uh, last one is the settings. And uh, this is just how do you want the mobile app to appear, work, the units, how you want the compass to work. There's just different settings that you can make here to customize it for the way you would prefer to see how things look on the screen and how they actually function. Okay. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to go to this saved piece. That's where we're going to spend most of our time. And, um, Again, if you hear me talking about something, you'd go select something down here and you can't see it. My apologies. Uh, just keep in mind that 
These are the four options that I might be referring to. Okay, so I'm going to stretch the map out. I'm going to, I, I just press this here. And then I'm going to zoom out. I'm just taking my fingers and I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing this on the screen to zoom back out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to touch that. And what I want you to do is I want you to look for some things that are going to appear here. And this is going to be the video series, the five part uh atv overland in the western up of michigan um, so you're going to see those details there so i'm going to touch this next and then i am going to go to the save folder here and i'm going to find my folder that's related to the Western Michigan UP trip. So right here is my 2021 Western UP trip. Now, I did mention this in the other video that this is redundant. Since I'm in a 2021 folder, why do you have this? I just haven't gone through and renamed those yet. It takes up valuable real estate. I, I'm gonna do that so I see more of a description. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, so that was visible. I don't know why there wasn't anything on there, but I just turned it off. That little symbol right there is is an eye it's supposed to represent an eye and um if i hit it toggle it it should turn on everything you should see a whole bunch of stuff come up here i uh, just want to show you what's behind this dot 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 here uh, there's just a couple of menu options you can share so if you do have some people that you're going with and they also use gaia gps uh, you can go ahead and click on or touch that share and put their email addresses in there and share this folder or any folder beneath depending on how you want to control things so that they also have it available to them on their on their map that's how you do that part uh, i'm going to now touch this right here i just touched that again to turn it on and off so you just touch it and then you touch it again and get rid of it okay now we're going to turn on the Western UP folder. You can see that there's all kinds of stuff going on there. I know it doesn't look very good or very readable, but as you zoom in, um, that will change. So I'm gonna zoom in here. And now it kind of sorts itself out a little bit and puts things uh, spread out on the map for us a little better. So. All right, now that we're in the 2021 Western UP ATV trip folder, I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to look for planned routes, which is right here. I'm going to click the eyeball symbol there and you will see uh, these routes. I'm gonna move it over a little bit by touching the screen on the iPad. And you'll notice that there are routes here and I we did start from Iron River. Uh, I do know, and I do have a key waypoint. It just, it's weird on the mobile app. Sometimes you, it works right. Sometimes it doesn't. I, I'm sure there's something that I'm not doing correctly. But I like to have a waypoint that right here. It means nothing as far as location, but it has key uh, information on it. Like day one is uh, orange. Um, it might even, I might even have mileage on it just to know how far we're going. Day two would be blue. Day three would be purple. Day four would be red. Then day five would be green. And what I can do here, and it does look a little strange with some of these, and we don't do this a lot. <clears throat> we like to do loops. We don't like to travel back over the same trails. But when you're going out to the Keweenaw Peninsula, you're going to go back over top of places that you've already been. You know, so that, you know, some of this is a repeat here. And this is, you know, we came in and went back, came back. A little bit of repeat here. And then this is all, you know, new here. And then this is all new until we came here. And then we're repeating here because this was day one. And this was day five coming back. 
generally don't like to do that, but sometimes you just don't have a choice and it looks a little confusing. So if you want to kind of see things isolated, you can do that. And what I'm doing is I'm going to click in on the planned routes and it's going to show me day one. Well, I have little special routes to make sure that we could find the waterfalls and the, the traction. So I'm going to just kind of scroll past those. And this is WUP's Western UP day three, day four, um, day five. So let's just say that I only want to look at day one for a minute. So what I'll do is I'll turn off day two, and day, th I guess the palming lights there. I'll turn everything else off here. Okay. So now you can see clearly what day one was. We went from Iron River and this was our route into Antanagan. Now, if you want to show day two, and I did that when I was on the trail, it's like, uh, can't have all these days on. It's confusing. So I would turn off those other days so I could make sure I was following the correct uh, route. Let's say I don't want day one on anymore. So I turn that one off and I want day two on. So now I've got day two and that's my route. Now, some of this, I might be going back over what we did for day one. But I can tell now I'm just looking and focusing it on a blue. Okay, and I can turn that off. And let's say I want to look at day three. So that was day three. And then day four. And finally, the last day five, which was a short day. Now, I'd also like, oh, well, day four, we want to make sure that, you know, we see, you know, some of the attractions that we wanted. So I'd turn these on or any other day you can kind of tell right here there was a little bit of a detour that i wanted to do here to, so we could see um agate falls and then there was bond falls here later on whenever you maybe accidentally put something on the map here it kind of counts as a waypoint and it gives you the chance to save it or whatever if you do that accidentally all I'm doing is I'm, then this is an accidental waypoint here. All I'm doing is coming back and clicking the X. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out and I turn some things on, turn some things off. And most of the time this works. I'm just going to back out and I'm going to turn off plan routes and then turn. Sometimes I click over too far here and I hit that instead. So that's what just happened there. And now I have everything as far as planned routes turned on again. Now, as I'm going on the trail, I'm following these routes, depending on whether day one or whatever day it is. But at the same time, I'm recording that actual track. So uh, what's happening is my actual track is going over top of this. So I'm going to turn on day one and then I'm going to show you the actual track for day one. But first I'm going to show you all the actual tracks. So I'm going to turn off planned routes, which I just click this and I'm going to come down here and turn on actual routes. So these are the actual routes that we, that I recorded and you can, you know, every once in a while I forget. So like this right here, eh, I forgot to turn it on when I left the hotel and went to the restaurant. So there's a little bit of a gap. It, it happens. It just happens sometimes. So, okay. So now if I go into actual routes and I turn on, um, I turn everything off, but let's say day one. And I come back out here. And I do planned routes and I turn off everything. Oops. I guess I only need to turn on day one. Everything else is turned off. So I'm gonna find day one and turn that on. Now again here, if you zoom in, you can, you know, it's hard to tell 
if there's a track on top of a track, but if you look very closely right here, you can tell that this was the planned route here, this yellow, and the blue was the actual route. And sometimes, you know, I take a different route. Sometimes it's just GPS error. All right, so I'm going to come back out and I'm going to turn planned routes and actual routes off just to get everything clear. And the advantage of using folders again is you can turn everything back on real quick. I can just have planned routes and then, well, you know, I also have other things on here like well, what happens if we break down? Where are the power, where are the power sporting stores? So I can turn those on. It's like, okay, so there's, you know, depending on where we might break down, maybe we can go get parts someplace. It's maybe nice to know that. Don't know how realistic it is if we go there, if they'll actually have our parts, but at least there's a chance. Or we might have our lodging opportunities. Um, didn't stay at all these places, but when I'm planning, I uh, try to put all the different places on there and then we pick the ones that are going to be most suitable for wherever we think we're going to land or however far we want to travel for that day. Our scenic uh, waypoints is, you know, where, where maybe do I want to get off the quad and take some pictures? Okay, maybe there's some gas stations that we need to be aware of if we think we're in a long leg where we didn't see a gas station from a previous town and we just need to know so we can plan accordingly. And um, just miscellaneous stuff, I don't have any previous category. I'll stick them in there just so I don't litter things up. Where might there be photo opportunities? I always love bridges. I've said that in some previous videos. If I ever see a bridge over a river, is that something that I can maybe paddle down the road? So I always like to look at that stuff. And then we have our planned routes and our actual routes. Okay, next we're gonna talk about waypoints. And uh, I want to look at this plus here. So I'm going to touch screen that plus there. I'm going to go to touch on the iPad. And if I wanted to add a waypoint, now there's a couple of different ways you can add a waypoint. I can add it through the menu. And here it um, brings up the latitude and longitude. And I can move that around. I'm just touching it with my finger and I'm putting it, you know, wherever. So if you're on the trail and you see something that might be interesting, which all the time I see stuff, maybe a, an old building site, part of an iron mine or something like that. And I would, I would just, you know, quickly reach down, touch the screen. And then I would just put something very, very quickly there. And I just press save there. And I might say like old iron mine or something like that. And I don't really worry about proper case. I'll come back and change that stuff later. And then I'd save that. So that's how you can use waypoints one way. Another way is just don't worry about hitting this plus. Just touch wherever you're at. Now, what we're missing here is I'm not really here. I'm down here, right? I'm, I'm down here in the lower peninsula. You would look for your location. And, you know, if you were somewhere on the trail and pretend this is on the trail and you're at a spot that you actually want to record a waypoint, then you would just touch the screen and then you'd, so all I did is I touched the screen and then I'm going to come over here and save. And then you would type in whatever you want and uh, save that. So I'm going to click cancel. And I'm now going to click the X. And because I went one step further to save it, it named it. It is really difficult if you're not on top of things to keep yourself organized. So I have this waypoint on my screen, right? I want to get rid of it. I'm going over to these triple dots here, okay? And then I'm selecting delete. Delete confirmation, yes. So for those that want to keep things clean in the mobile app while you're on the trail, there's that's how you would do that. So there's two ways to take a picture. And one is going into this plus menu and taking a picture. The other way is just touching this camera. I take a picture and then I use that photo 
and then it associates it with my GPS location. So that's how you uh, use photos. And if you, if I touch this photo right here, it shows the photo over here that I took. And then if I want to uh, share it, I, I, the mark location, it will choose it just like a waypoint. But if I want to get rid of it, I can do that too just by going to these triple dots and deleting the photo. So that's uh, more or less what the things that I use uh, with Gaia GPS on a mobile device. There's much more it can do. Uh, these are the things that I typically use when I'm uh, using Gaia GPS on an iPad mini. I want to thank you for stopping by the channel and checking this video out. If this is something that's useful to you, consider liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell. And until next week, take care and thank you.